Hello Wargamers and welcome to another Steel Division Normandy 44 with me Bubblebox and today I'm going to do a bit of a tutorial. This is only for beginners so if you're kind of a regular to the channel then uh, this isn't probably going to be as, in, as much interest to you unless you've just bought the game of course and want to start playing it. I'm just going to go actually show people how to play the game and what it's all about and the HUD and stuff just by playing a game against the AI and uh, talking about things slow, relatively slowly as we come up against them. I've put the AI on, I'm going to actually put it on uh, just on easy, just so that it's not going to be too difficult so that I can explain the game and not have to uh, play too hard. And we'll use the SS Panzers because they've got, they'll have some tanks and stuff for us to talk about as well. So once you've chosen the uh, mode you want, then there's two modes, just to mention that actually probably is a good idea. Destruction mode and conquest mode. Destruction mode, um, victory depends on how many of the enemy's units you kill, whereas conquest mode is going to depend on how much territory you take and for how long, and I'll explain that once we get into the game. You can play as axes against allies, axes against axes or allies against allies. You can set the starting resources, which I'll talk about when I get into the game. You can ch ch to, uh, decide on your income rate. Again, which you can we'll have to talk about that in game. The number of conquest points. This is going to be a conquest, not a destruction. If it was destruction, then it would be the number of victory points instead. But we're going to play conquest because it's the mode I think this game is uh, probably best suited to if you've got fairly even teams. You can also set a time limit if you want. We'll put no time limit because I'm just going to do a tutorial. Although, don't worry it won't be too long. So let's launch away, playing the AI on easy. We're playing with uh, the Red Devils, which is an airborne division. Now I will put another video out to talk about the different types of divisions and the deck building kind of card system where by which you um, compose your divisions in probably the next video. But I didn't want to do that in the first video because what most people want to do when they buy the game is get in and play the game. So this is what you first see. This is your HUD and the script play screen this is the map this is a 1v1 map and if i zoom out this is actually the whole of the map is the 4v4 version so it goes up in size depending on whether you're playing 1v1 2v2 3v3 or 4v4 and there are of course some 10v10 games and maps as well so the first thing you'll notice when you get into the game is that half of it is red and then the rest of it's blue and in fact half of it's deep red and light red and the other half is deep blue and light blue and this area that i'm pointing at or are circling now is the uh, our area which is we are the allies and the red is the axis area now the darker color or this area here and this area of the red is where you deploy your starting units and the lighter color is the area that you at the moment control and the division between the two is your front line and we'll talk a little bit more about that at the moment on the top left are your deployment points or requisition menu you have 500 at the start of this game and you're going to get 70 extra points every 60 seconds in the game if you click on that there's your deck now when you first start playing just make a a very quick deck or use a custom deck you can build just custom decks the game will uh, make a deck for you and just get playing play some skirmishes against the ai to get used to the unit types I'm not going to go through all the unit types although i will talk about generally what to do with kind of infantry and armored divisions and recon and stuff but i'm not going to go through the individual units that's not the purpose of this tutorial so that's where you can get units in we'll have a look at that in a second on the top right You've got uh, a red marker at the top. It says phase B in 10 minutes. That is, there's phase A, phase B and phase C. You're in phase A. Phase A lasts for 10 minutes and it's meant to be the reconnaissance and skirmish uh, part of the game. Although, believe me, you will be in some heavy battles in phase A right from the start, especially in smaller battles. It's not really recon. Recon really is the first two minutes, I would say. And after that, you are fighting against the enemy. But in phase A, you can only unlock certain units in your deck. And in phase B, you can unlock all the phase A and all the phase B units that are in your deck. And in phase C, you can unlock all the phase A, the phase B and the phase C units. And as you can see here, the phase C units at the moment are greyed out and all the phase A units are 
colored so they're the ones that you can use in phase A and we'll show you how to use them very shortly. If we go down from phase A, we'll say time elapsed, that's obviously just the time that's elapsed in the game so far. There's your mini-map, which is very important. You can see where planes are coming out and where the enemy is. You can see, of course, you can't, there is a fog of war in this game. And then below that, there shows you the distribution of uh, land in the case of a conquest and points in the case of points derived in the case of destruction but here we're just going to be talking about conquest so it's zero zero because the front line is exactly in the center with each of the teams holding 50 percent of the ground on each side speed um, in multiplayer games you cannot alter the speed but in uh, skirmish and i believe in the i imagine in the campaign as well you can alter the speed right down to bullet time where you can actually watch it in dead slow motion or very fast and I'll just put it back to normal right for now. Then you've got uh, below that you've got the allies and axis score, you've got the players in the allied and in in so far it's only me and uh, the score out of 2500, 2500 is your target for this game. You need to get to 2500 points to win and there's the AI on easy. Now you'll also see that it's split up into three sections, one, two, three for your points and this shows you how many activation points, like is it activation points or income, how much income you're going to get per minute during phase A, how much you're going to get per minute in phase B, and how much you're going to get per minute in phase C, and the same for the axis. And different divisions, these numbers are different depending on the type of division that you choose and their role in the game. Below that, you've got your kind of control screen, and uh, we'll show you just first of all you've got an attack beacon you've got your defense beacon and uh, your help beacon and you can also if you click over here you can type anything you want in and just click that and put that on a beacon as well so we'll quickly get rid of those so um, you don't want to launch battle just yet on the bottom here because first of all you want to deploy your units now for us we're going to be deploying in this blue zone down here first thing you probably want to deploy is recon. I'll have a qu very quick chat about some of the different units in game in a second but you want to put them on a fast route to the front line that's very important so this will normally be a road and uh, so for example if I put this reconnaissance unit here it will go straight up this main artery and uh, to perhaps this town if I want it in this town or I could send it over this way or I could even put one um, a recce truck for example over here Reke, Reki, sorry, Reki. I keep calling them Reke, I get told off. Reki truck over here. And uh, you can give your, let's put a few out first. So if we, for example, if we want to try and take, a, say, this town, we're going to want some infantry in there. So you go to your inf, your infantry tab up here, grab yourself some infantry that you want. We'll take some A, B paras. They're quite good in buildings. So we'll get a couple of those and we'll get a commander to go with it and I'll explain briefly the commanders once we get underway and we could take tanks uh, we could take more reconnaissance we could take some anti-tanks in fact we take an, a pack gun and we'll put that maybe over on the right here to protect all this open ground and we'll show you how you can tell if it's open or closed ground in a moment you can get anti-air artillery aircraft should we get a mosquito pathfinder we'll get an aircraft as well if you click on the aircraft and you want an aircraft it will appear in the bottom left hand side and this is where you control your aircraft and your off-board artillery from i'll explain the off-board artillery in fact it's going to be worth getting in some off-board artillery i think just to show you how that plays we'll get that in briefly as you can see this has gone to red which means you don't have enough points to take these just now and we're going to have to wait until a minute into the game before we can get some off-board artillery now next, if you want, you can give your units orders before the game starts. Um, for example, if we want this chap here, we'll click on him or you can draw a box around it. And down on the bottom right are your controls. And you can see there's four highlighted at the moment. You can move fast and this is the one you want. If you want your units just to move straight down the road, so you left click or draw a box and then click on move fast. Or you can use a hotkey, F and you just click left click on the road and that will move fast down that road. You can also grab a whole load and you can move them all fast 
towards the front line and we'll do the same over here. Now if you want you can give them individual orders right at the start as well. For example if we wanted for example in fact we probably do want this anti-tank gun to sit maybe in one of these covered areas and I will explain the covered areas very briefly shortly. You can click on that and if you hold down the shift key you don't have to hold down the shift key it will show you the order that you've given and it will do that for so hold down the shift key so circle your units hold down the shift key and it will show you the orders you've given but we can give this guy perhaps an order to first of all go over to here maybe and unload about here so, oh in fact we just need to cancel that all right so we could get him to unload at this position and then walk forward into this position and that will then be his order okay so the other one's going over there on a fast move this guy's going over here unloading and then he's walking to here so you can using the shift key you can stack the uh, orders that you give it involves a bit of micro now what i tend to like to do personally is just let them run towards the front line and then grab them and distribute them as and when i want to as they're moving towards the front line the reason i like to do that is it gives you a chance to see where the front lines are going because as your units move towards the front line it will move towards the enemy but as the enemy moves towards you their front line will move towards you and we'll see that in action in a moment and that's what gives the dynamism to the front line in this particular game we'll go through some of the other orders that you can give as well there's reverse now the reverse is really really important in this game and you can attach it to a particular key in this term in this case it's the Q key so you're going to need to learn that because it means you need if you need to get your units out of trouble really quickly you can quickly press your reverse key or use this use this over here which takes a bit longer obviously if you have to drag your mouse over and your unit will reverse back from where it is but it will remain with its front armor facing the enemy which is very very important there's also an auto cover button which is by default on so when you unload your units they will by default look for cover and go to that cover you can turn this off and there are many op many times when you don't want your units actually to be in cover but to sit behind for example behind cover so that they can't be spotted by enemy reconnaissance then there's got the unload at position and if you want to just unload um, a unit really quickly you just press U so if you suddenly come up against some enemies and your units are in a truck for example grab them press you they will unload and go to cover as quickly as they can or start engaging the enemy and then there's a stop button if you want to stop your units dead on so our units are kind of ready to go so apart from that i think that's all the hud sorted out that's what the game looks like just taking a look at where your units come in from it's good to be aware of that so obviously it's pretty obvious where they're coming from all your land units are going to come in from the nearest land spawn arrow and your air units from the nearest air spawn arrow although there has been some issues with them coming out at odd ones for the aircraft but i'm sure they'll fix that on release or at least hopefully they will so we're going to launch away and as soon as we launch our vehicles will start moving towards their allotted positions um, carrying out the orders that we've already given them in the game and as you can see the front line starting to move around so these units on the left here are pushing this front line back quite a long way so i'm going to keep them i'm going to go fast moving i'm going to keep them moving over towards this town so it looks like the ai or the enemy is coming up on this side so i've got to be a little bit more careful with my units over here also my recon i think we can afford to push that up a little bit as well and i'm going to explain a little bit more about recon really really important in the early part of the game and in fact i'm going to take it down to bullet point and explain why recon is so important in the early part of the game to you so i'm going to unload this recon so i'm going to just highlight it and press u and, uh, and it will unload i'll just speed it up a little bit so it unloads and then i'm going to take that recon up there now what's important about recon is all of your units will influence the front line and how the front line moves and the area under which you have control except for the recon units the recon units have no control over the front line so for example this recon unit is not pushing this front line back because it doesn't influence the front line it's a recon unit whereas these units over here which are not recon units will influence and push back as you can see this front line because they have influence over the area in which they are in and the same goes for these guys over on the right here this anti-tank gun will have influence over the front line whereas this wreckage truck 
won't. And that's something that's really important to remember. You can sneak your recon units even behind enemy lines if you are good enough, get them right up there, and you'll be able to get good early intel and recon on the enemy as they are advancing, so you'll know what the enemy's got in their, in their army. And that's also something that's really important in this game, is to know your enemy. If you know your enemy and you know what your enemy's got, then you know how to respond and counteract the units that your enemy has in their particular division. So we'll move on a little bit. So as I've spotted here, we've unloaded and we're going to get this guy into position. And we'll get our recon just maybe over here. It's quite easy to see recon in trucks, but it's not very easy to see recon in uh, here. But I'm not going to go into all the different, different uh, types of units. Now what I might do here, and I'll just tell you why, and why the front line is so important, if I just put it on bullet point, what I might do here is just bring some infantry. We'll go to the infantry tab and uh, maybe bring a Bren group in and put them up here. Now the reason for doing that is it will stop infantry coming across the open space, but it will give me some influence over this area, which currently the computer has, has the, uh, the enemy has influence over because our reconnaissance doesn't influence the front line, but this unit, which is a standard infantry unit, will influence the front line. Meanwhile on the left, we are continuing to move our units forward into the town. So we'll run it forward a little bit more. Okay, and I'll just bullet point it down. As you can see, a minute's gone by now, so we've now got some extra points. We've got an extra 70 points up on the top left here. So what I'm going to do is get in some more units. And at this stage, I think we'll get in some off-board. Oh, no, we can't quite get it yet. We'll give it another minute until we can get in our off-board artillery. That often happens as well. You think, oh, I'll get this unit in, but you haven't quite got enough points, and you have to wait a little bit. So let's move time on a little bit. So you can see now that they are bringing their units down the road here. Now, one thing, uh, this is a really good opportunity to show it, and that is the C button. The C button is your friend. Learn how to use the C button. If I go on my anti-tank gun here and press the C button, it will give the range, first of all. Um, so you will know if your anti-tank gun is going to be able to shoot, for example, this SDK in the distance. Also, it will show you the line of sight of your unit. So anything that's not hashed is got this and this unit has got line of sight to and can shoot at that unit if it's in range. And also, if it's not hashed, then it has not got line of sight. So you've got to be really careful about where you position. And you can press the C button over and drag your mouse around any part of the map. You can even put it on the enemy units and press the C button and you can see what they can see as well, which is just as important as knowing what you can see. You can also check out where your reconnaissance can see as well. So this reconnaissance should have a good vision of the airfield and will help out this pack gun to spot these units as well. Apart from that, um, another important thing to know, especially in the if you want to do well at this game is be aware of the I button. If I click on this anti-tank gun here and I press the I button, it will bring up the stats on that unit. So it will tell me what that unit can do. Now this tutorial is not looking at the stats. We'll do that in the next one when we have a look at the deck building system. But in this case, you can see that this anti-tank gun's got 13 armor piercing um, power. So it's gonna destroy this SDK because this SDK as you can see here, its front best armor, which shows below this yellow ring, is 2, and it has an AP damage of 8. Now you can also click on the enemy units if you can see them, which is why reconnaissance is so important. So if I click on the enemy unit, and it will show its stats, you can see it's got an AP of 4, a range of 800, and if we click back on our anti-tank gun, it's got an AP of 13 and an HE of 20. Now it is actually about to fire upon this SDK F7. When a unit fires, you'll get this circle up and it will run down. Remember, it's on bullet point at the moment, so it's going really slowly, but this will gradually go down. And when it gets to a close, that's just it loading up and aiming. And it will get a round off and it will try to destroy this SDK. So this with an anti-tank power of 13 and the SDK with a defensive armor of 2 should do pretty well. So we'll let this guy get a shot off. We'll speed it up just a little bit, let him get his shot off. There it goes, and you can see if I put it on bullet time, really cool. You can actually see the actual weapon firing and the shell heading towards it. looks pretty good, looks pretty accurate. The accuracy on your anti-tank gun is listed at 6, so you've got a 
better than 50% chance of hitting and it does hit now and it actually kills this SDK okay cool so that's basically the basics of combat so it's all about cover where your enemy is where you are having line of sight knowing what your units can do and knowing what the enemy's units can do as well so I think we'll uh, speed up a little bit I'm gonna unload and I'm, so I'm gonna circle these I'm gonna press right. the U button and they will find their own way into the town into a village in the town now a good opportunity here is to talk about the commanders now we've got our paras here I'm just gonna move forward a little bit into this forward building and I'm gonna move these other AB paras which stands for airborne paratroopers and they'll leave the leader just there now if I click on the leader and leaders are very important this day this in this game you'll see they've got a circle around them and that means they exert an influence on the other units within their circle their own units and also your allied units if you have an ally it looks like our anti-tank gun is again firing this particular anti-tank gun has HE rounds so it can fire at infantry and at uh, um, armor and uh, ooh, we'll come back to commanders in a second because I want to show you something else we'll put it down to bullet point real quick because you can see this red bar on the top of this unit this is its stress bar and as this anti-tank anti gun hits this, its stress will increase as it comes under more fire. If its stress level gets full, and which it's going to do very shortly if this guy keeps forward, and I'll move my reconnaissance forward just so that we can make sure we get this stressed out. And there we go, it's fully stressed. And when they get fully stressed, in fact we may have destroyed it, we may not, we'll just move the reconnaissance unit. No, we haven't destroyed it, so it's still there. Um, it's uh, we just lost sight of it briefly there so it's actually starting to retreat so if something gets really stressed it will either get pinned down so it will stay where it is and they'll lie down they're less likely to get hit when they're lying down but they do not fire back when that happens sometimes they will retreat and sometimes if you want them to you can actually make them retreat by pressing the retreat button which will appear on the bottom right of the screen um, once we get to see the units, so we'll move forward a little bit, see if we can spot this unit. It may have gone to ground and gone into cover, which is very likely. If it's speed it up a little bit and have a look. So be a little bit careful and we'll pull back there. So that's kind of how the stress thing works. So you can stress them and you can make them pull back. But um, And also when they're stressed, they're more likely to die as well. So back to the commander. So the commander exerts an influence on the uh, units. Now these units here, as you can see, are my uh, airborne paras. And they have, normally, if I move, you can see they've got three stars. Now normally, if I move this guy out of their influence, or out of influence maybe of one of them, I can show you what this guy does. So I'll move him out of the way real quick. And then we'll stop him just there, I think. Yep, we'll stop him there, take it down. You can see he's influencing now one set of the units, but not the other. And you'll see this unit that he's influencing has three stars, and this unit that's influencing has two stars. Two stars means, it, what, no, no stars means it's just a normal unit. Two stars regular, uh, sorry, one star um, veteran, two stars elite, three stars, well, super elite, I guess. And uh, you can see this leader is also an elite as well. The number of stars the leader has will depend, will give uh, it a greater radius of influence. So if it's got uh, no stars, it will have quite a small radius of influence. And if it's got two stars, it will have a very big radius of influence. The influence helps things such as the weapons accuracy the, and the fire rate of the weapon and also how quickly it takes your unit to receive stress and also how quickly it recovers from stress as well so it does all those things so the commanders although to beginner players don't perhaps seem that important when you become good at good at playing the game you will see you will find out that the commanders are immensely powerful they will also speed up the fire rate of artillery the fire rate and accuracy of anti-air weapons and all that sorts of things so you want to have a good splattering of commanders in your deck if at all possible so let's move the game forward a little bit so as you play you're going to be wanting to get reconnaissance on the enemy as we've just spotted there another SDK that is a different one because uh, 
we've already destroyed the other one so we're going to have to pull back and you can see the enemy just try to take a shot on our carrier but luckily I grabbed it and I, I grabbed my uh, carrier reconnaissance I pressed my reverse button and pulled it back to get it out of trouble and my anti-tank gun's sitting there so if that comes forward my anti-tank gun will be able to take some shots at it and okay, we might even be able to bait this guy in if we move back in this direction a little bit and you can see our anti-tank gun is going to take a shot at the SDK and gives it some stress the SDK has got into range and you can see it says bounce that means that the rounds have kind of just bounced off the front armor of our carrier and that thing is pulling back as it gets hit and destroyed by our anti-tank gun another little bit of combat for you now next thing I think we should have a look at is the aircraft tab on the bottom right we did grab an aircraft at the start and in fact before we do that I'm just going to bring in my offboard artillery which we're going to use so I'm going to grab the offboard artillery here for 160 points click it down and it will come in and it will take the quickest route to the front line so your reinforcements will take the quickest route to the front line once you bring them in also we can unload this chap here just press the U button and he will then we'll put him into this building and he will have an influence on this front line once we get rid of this SDK. Now we're going to try and do that using our Mosquito Pathfinder. So you uh, click ready. on the plane and the Mosquito Pathfinder by the way is just a bomber and if you click on the unit you can either click on the unit or if you know where there are units but you can't see them you can actually click on a position but I'm going to actually just click on the unit and it should it should drop on there now you can also if you want you can get close up so if you kind of click on your unit and zoom in sometimes it's a bit glitchy and doesn't work all the time you can get close ups and you can actually ride if you want with your unit up to where it bombs or shoots or whatever so again as I say it's a bit glitchy and we've speeded the game up we'll try and get on board there we are so we're on board this guy we're heading over for this SDK so you can watch it you can see all around as well using the middle mouse button just press that down and uh, when you're ready it will drop its bombs hopefully there they go and we'll zoom out and we'll just watch these bombs drop on top of this SDK these are incendiary bombs so they will set this guy alight it will certainly um, stress him they may destroy him as well so he got very stressed he's also in the fire and if ever your units are in fire they will take stress and damage and even die until they get out of that fire so this guy's getting really stressed in that burning fire okay I'm gonna get another plane now so we can got plenty of resource points so we can go to the air tab we can go, oh no we can't until B we will move on to B very very shortly we'll at least play till B while I'm doing this tutorial and I'm gonna use move my anti-tank gun forward as well so I'm gonna grab my anti-tank gun forward now normally I wouldn't move my anti-tank guns out in the open but the AI is on very easy so it's not gonna be quite easy to defend if it does get attacked and we're gonna press my move forward key and this is uh, the hunt key in the uh, tab on the bottom right hunt means that your units will move forward um, they won't take into account the fastest route they will just move forward to where you have clicked and they will stop and they will fire at any unit they come across on their way yes. so we're going to move forward yeah, our tank gun I'll move forward my recce carrier as well and uh, we might as well grab our Bren group and we'll move that forward normally in fact we'll move it forward in fact to this front building over here and we'll do the same with our pathfinders in fact we'll move that one to there move our pathfinders our recon remember up to here now while that's kind of happening i will put it on slow we'll just discuss cover a little bit I think and there's another SDK coming out over there they like those don't they this group so I've got to watch out for my carrier and you can see that the, uh, an AI infantry unit is there in the middle of the airfield now it was a recon unit and it's got stealth so that's why we didn't see it straight away and we had to get our recon unit fairly close before we see, saw it different units have different optics so they can see nearer or further away and also different units have different stealth which is important that de stealth depends on whether they can be seen so I think this anti-tank gun is going to open up on I'm not sure if it's opening up on this SDK or it's opening up on this spa trooper and the SDK goes down there so we'll continue to just to move forward a little bit I wanted to do was uh, oh well, our offboard artillery has arrived so we're going to show you that actually so I don't want to engage this guy I want to show you the offboard artillery so I'll move them back no don't fire move back thank you I'm just going to show you how the offboard artillery works. So the offboard artillery is very powerful, especially early in the game if you're trying to get into a town, for example. I've got an enemy using it, moving a um, commander up there. 
So we'll just move this, speed the game up a little bit. Now the offboard artillery, as you can see, has an area around it. And basically this is your spotter for your offboard artillery. So you need to first of all, to use your offboard artillery, you need to get your spotter here, your Willys OP in this case, into range of the position you want to uh, hit. And for argument, just, just for the game, just for the sake of this tutorial, we're going to actually try to hit this guy here. So on the bottom left, with your aircraft, are your offboard artillery. So there's three sections here. You can do an emergency one, which is very wide area, but comes very quickly, in this case 24 to, th 24 to 32 seconds. You can do what I like to call a normal barrage, which is fire for effect, which has a smaller target area, so a little bit more concentrated, takes a little bit longer to come into play though. So the enemy, in other words, the enemy could move out of that area before the, the uh, bombardment comes down. Or you've got a very targeted one here, which comes quite quickly. And that's the one we're going to use and we're going to try to destroy this recon unit. So you just left click on it to place your bombardment or your offboard artillery. And it's a good idea to hide your unit after that so that the enemy, because if the enemy does see these, then it will target them. Okay, so I'm going to move our infantry across a little bit as well. Now I'll talk a little bit about cover while we're here. Now cover is really important in this game as well. This out in the open, you've got no cover, and these units are very exposed out here. All of these units in the middle of this airfield, this isn't recommended to do this, but they are all in poor cover. In poor cover, you can get shot easier, you're easily pinned, you're easily destroyed, you're easily spotted as well. Just move our recce truck back a bit. Now, this anti tank gun is in this cover, which is if you mouse over, you'll either have a clear mouse, or you'll have a mouse that's dark green, or you'll have a mouse that's yellow. Oh, and our offboard artillery has just dropped, as you can see, and uh, a big crater where that recon unit used to be. So that landed and destroyed that recon unit. So back to cover. So there's no cover. There's light cover, which really is very light cover. Apart from recon units, most things can be seen in this cover by enemy recon units. And then you've got heavy cover. Now, heavy cover doesn't mean that your unit cannot be seen. It just means that it's in heavy cover and is less likely to be seen. When a unit is in cover, it will flash like this anti-tank gun is flashing here. However, just because it's flashing does not mean it is not seen by the enemy. For example, I doubt the enemy can see this anti-tank gun. But this recon unit that the enemy had in the middle of the airfield probably could see this, this anti-tank gun, even though it's in heavy cover. And with some units, sometimes, Ready, if you don't mind microing a little bit, you want to leave it up, just man. behind the heavy cover because you cannot see. Although enemy recon can see into this heavy cover, it cannot see behind the heavy cover. So if you Ready, put your unit behind heavy back. cover and then you go down the right-hand side here and click Auto Cover Off, this will not go back into cover of its own accord. It will stay out on the road. And then when your recon spots a unit in range, you just click your anti-tank gun, move it into the trees, and it can shoot. Another option is to put it on um, something called return fire, which is a little bit more advanced. I'm not going to go into that in this tutorial, so that it only fires if spotted and fired upon. A little bit more about cover. Buildings, most buildings will offer you heavy cover as well. Buildings are destructible, so you can destroy a building. Once it's destroyed, it will still affect line of sight, but it will not be able to be used for cover anymore. Woods like this are heavy cover. All buildings are heavy cover. These orchards, which are spattered around the map here, these things are light cover. Although they do provide very good cover because the depth through which an enemy or even a recon can see through these is quite limited. So there's always a good place to put maybe anti-air units, anti um, or air or artillery units. When playing, basics are keep your recon, keep plenty of recon on the enemy, keep your recon hidden, and keep your recon safe. Infantry, there's lots of different types of infantry. We're not going to go over all the different types of infantry, but they obviously are going to be better in closed off areas, in towns, in hedgerows, in bocage country. And all your different weapons have different um, ranges and different effects. Remember to check out that stats by pressing the I button if you want to see what they can do. Tanks 
obviously much better in open ground for example tanks would be really good and he's actually brought up a panzer two now which is good so i'll just move my pack forward for forward to try to take out that panzer two so tanks very good in the open not very good idea to move your tanks through um, bocage country or through towns without infantry support it's very important when you're using tanks to use infantry support so move your infantry up towards that hedgerow to check it out first then move your tank don't do it the other way as my anti-tank gun because these guys here are just moving up their tanks without any infantry support as the ai and that tank is just going to get destroyed straight away and then after that shot it's actually going to shoot at these other panzer grenadiers and they've gone out of sight so i'll just move my anti-tank gun behind to cover again now all these big hedgerows are also, as well as providing heavy cover, are impassable by armoured vehicles of any sort. So any half-tracks, any tanks cannot pass through these um, heavy cover tree lines here. And they're shown by this raised area of land here. Infantry, um, anti-tank weapons, anti-air guns and um, what else? Um, some artillery as well can move through these tree lines but, but uh, anything that's armoured has to move around them so you need to bear that in mind also anything can move through the orchards anything can move through open ground only infantry can go into buildings artillery pieces even anti-tank guns small anti-tank guns cannot go inside the buildings um, apart from that so I've talked about tanks very briefly. Support, support. Don't overlook your support tab. It's got some very nice units in. Often you'll need supply wagons. And we'll bring in a supply wagon here just to show you that. Supply wagons, you can resupply the ammo of all of your units with your supply wagons. Okay. You cannot resupply the off-board artillery. The off-board artillery has three shots. And once those three shots are gone, then the off-board artillery is finished. In fact, we'll just lay down another barrage over here just for something to do. So once your off-board artillery is finished, it's finished, and that unit is useless unless it has a secondary weapon that it can use. So, But there are lots of, other, lots of useful units in support. Um, supply, there's command units, for example, this dingo here, and then there's lots of, often a number of units which are really good at fighting infantry, which fire powerful HE weapons. Anti-tank speaks for itself. This is where all your anti-tank weapons are going to be um, if you want to bring those out. Anti-tanks can be either towed, um, which are can get to the front line fairly quickly while they're being towed, but once at the front line they're quite slow to move around if you need to move them around, but you can hook them up with a transport if you've got one spare. Now one thing to note about transports is that if they do not have a weapon, once you unload your unit, whether it's an infantry unit or an artillery unit from that transport, that transport will disappear. However, if that transport has a weapon, it will remain on the map and will influence the front line. And you can use that, as our off-board artillery starts to fire, you can use that to um, move around your anti-tank weapons as well, if you don't mind microing them a little bit. You can see we've got some, we've actually got a truck coming in here. So this truck is full of infantry. It's a noble blitz. I know it's full of infantry. We've got some AB paras here. And we'll just move them forward. We might get a shot on the truck before it unloads with our anti-tank weapon that we have, with our AB paras. Our other AB paras are actually opening up. We'll open up now that we're close enough. If it gets a rocket off before they unload, it may well destroy that full truck. But it does unload just in time, so we're going to get our units in the building. And you can see, once they unload, that vehicle disappears because that vehicle didn't have a weapon. If that vehicle had a weapon, that would also offer these Panzer Grenadiers some fire support. If, for example, if it had a machine gun or two, it would fire at my enemy once it's unloaded its infantry. So that's something to bear in mind. Of course, infantry with transports that have weapons are going to cost you more requisition points than infantry without those uh, weapon carrying. Unit. So here's our supply wagon. It's arrived. And what I'll do, I'll just move that, fast move that over to my anti-tank gun just to resupply it. Resupply will only resupply your ammo. It will not resupply the health of your units. You cannot get replacements in this game at the moment. And uh, you cannot... Certain forms of damage, for example, to tanks will repair themselves over time and others types will not. For example, if you're detracked, 
then that's it. Your, your, your tank will flounder in that position. However, on occasion, all of your units will jump out of their tank uh, because they are so scared. And, but after a while, they'll get back in and they'll start fighting again. Moving on, anti-air is quite important in this game. Now, the anti-air, not going to go into great detail, but it works slightly differently in, in many games in that it's not effective at shooting down aircraft, but it's very effective at stunning and giving morale damage to enemy aircraft as they come towards you. So once their morale bars are full, so once they're all red from your anti-air, I'll bring some anti-air, bring a tripulse to now. Um, remember also when you're looking at your anti-air to check the stats, check how many guns they've got, what their caliber is, how many rounds per minute they fire. All that's really important when getting your anti-air out. But um, yeah, once, you're, you, once you're the enemy's fighter or the enemy's bomber or whatever it is reaches its full red on its uh, morale bar, it will evacuate. Now ways to kill plane. You can kill plane with anti-air if you have enough of it. But you do need a lot of it. But you can kill aircraft with anti-air. But the best way to kill aircraft is to use your fighters. That's what they're there for. So stun the aircraft coming in with your flak and then launch your fighter. To launch your fighter, you just grab it from your air tab, right click where you want it to go on the map and out it comes. Now fighters, there's no enemy aircraft on the map at the, at the moment, but what we're going to do with this fighter here, which is a Tempest, it's a bit of an interceptor, really fast. We're going to actually target this guy because as well as fighting against aircraft, don't forget your fighters can actually strafe against the enemy as well. So we're going to dive down and we're going to have a strafe at this artillery piece. Why do I know it's an artillery piece? Because it's got that little artillery symbol on the left hand side. And we'll be strafing that. You can see we're doing it morale damage at the moment. And then that plane, if I don't evacuate, will turn and it will come back of its own accord. And the enemy has in fact brought a fighter out. Fantastic. That means I can show you a bit of dog fighting. So the enemy, as soon as it saw my fighter, has brought out its own fighter, which is on my tail, which is quite bad news. The Tempest isn't the best at turning, so we may lose this battle. It's an ME-109. You can also click on the enemy's aircraft as well, and you can have a good close look at those. So the ME-109 has got a good turning circuit. If I had a Spitfire, I'll probably win this battle, but as it is, I haven't. So what I'll do in this case is grab another Tempest really quickly and bring that out to try to save this Tempest. So the other, my other Tempest is going to come out. We'll speed it up a little bit. So my other Tempest will come. It's going to target this ME-109. My Tempest is in trouble because this ME-109, now that it's fully damaged, it's going to fall back. But this ME-109 is not turning quite fast enough, so this is going to get away. And then my other Tempest is going to come in and engage the 109 and the fight will continue. But you can shoot down planes, just use anti-air to shoot them down and get a good amount of, um, sorry, use anti-air to stun and then get your fighters to take their aircraft. And you can see their aircraft has had to evac now. To evac an aircraft, you just grab it and on the bottom right hand corner here is the evac button or you can use the V button and just click that and your plane will get out. Now while it's getting out, and the reason I didn't evacuate my original Tempest was because once you press evac, it will turn and head straight back to your base. And if you do that and you've got a fighter on your tail, that fighter is just going to follow it and it will die. That's why I left my Tempest to dogfight a little bit. That's a bit, little bit more advanced, though. I don't want to talk about that too much in this tutorial. We'll send my Mosquito Pathfinder out for a bombing run, though. We'll just click that real quick. So that's the air, really. So as the game carries on, that's pretty much it, I think. So as the game carries on, and you can see my anti-tank weapon having a go at some infantry coming down here, because my anti-tank weapon, remember, this particular one can shoot HE. Not all of them can. Some of them have only got AP. So that's it. You'll be moving your units forward. You'll be engaging the enemy, using plenty of recon. And that's the game in a nutshell. So you can see on the top right-hand side, it's a phase C in five minutes. So we can, at the moment, we can unlock all our phase A weapons and all our phase B weapons, but not our phase C weapons. And you can see, because we've pushed this front line back and we own or own all of this area under the curve here, we actually own 56%, which means we get an extra, we get plus one towards our conquest points and our total victory points that we need, which is 2,500. If this was destruction, then we would simply be getting more requisition points instead of getting the conquest points and in destruction if you play that form it's about how many of the enemy you kill rather than 
how much of the land that you take. So guys, oh look, my tripulse has arrived. We'll just unload that, so we'll grab that, we'll press you. So yes guys, that's pretty much it. That's my beginner's lesson on how to play a game in Steel Division Normandy 44. And I'll put one up very shortly on how to use the deck building system and talk about the units a little bit more in depth. Uh, the general unit groups like the infantry, the tanks, the anti-air, etc. and how to use them. Now, if there are any of my regular subscribers that uh, have watched this video all the way to the end, then please do write in the comments below anything you think I've missed, anything that you will help beginners. Bearing in mind this is just for beginners, this video, and uh, not ready for advanced players. Anything you think might help them. Um, that I might have missed. That would be great if you could put that in the uh, comments below. And also, if you are a beginner and you watch this and uh, have got any comments you'd like to make, then please do put them in the comments below. Give us a thumbs up as well if you enjoyed it. And I'll see you in the next one.